Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Manga Artist, and I'm gonna be trying something a little different for this art video. I'm gonna be uh, talking off the cuff for this video. It's gonna be very hard for me to do that without doing, you know, all the uhs and likes and all that. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but this is just gonna be an experiment for this video. But um, today's video, um, to fit with uh, the last video that I made about um, doing Disney characters as manga art styles, I decided to do, for this video, I decided to do Pinocchio, and I drew him in the style of Junji Ito. Now, Junji Ito is easily one of my favorite manga artists of all time. Like, ever since I first looked at his work when I was once in an animation course, um, Junji Ito's work just always stood out to me. It was incredible. I always loved the aesthetic he gave. I love just the grittiness, the horror, fa like the scare factor in his drawings are incredible. And I feel like it's a style that um, is very hard to replicate. And that's just what made this drawing so much fun for me because... Um, because when it came to this drawing, I decided to do a lot more research into the art style than what I did with Beast. Because I made the very uh, bad decision of just assuming that, oh, the Berserk art style is just more details, blah blah blah. It's not that. It's way more complicated than that. And I feel like the Beast drawing wasn't the best thing in the world. I'm still happy with the drawing, but I do feel like it wouldn't fit Berserk's art style if you were to slap my drawing into the world of Berserk. So I think that video was a test, but also like a failed test. And so when it came to drawing Pinocchio this time, I made sure to do a lot of research when it came to um, studying Junji Ito's art style. I needed to find out how he did clothes, how he shades, how he does hair. How he did wood, I actually found one story specifically where he, um, had a monster that was all about wood. And it was a haunted mansion with, uh, eyes coming out of the wooden boards. And there was even a wooden woman, which was perfect reference for, uh, this drawing. It really helped with, um, getting the wood grains for Pinocchio. And I really, really loved how this drawing turned out. I really feel like the extra research I put into this video really helped me out. And, yeah, all in all, I have to say that Junji Ito's art style is amazing. It's so relaxing to try and replicate because usually I'm not exactly the biggest fan of just leaving stuff at just line work. I will want to do colors and stuff like that. But I feel like in terms of Junji's artwork, it's way better as just a black and white drawing. I feel like after applying so much detail to the clothes and especially the hair, I was like, I feel like color would have just ruined this piece, and I didn't really want that. But, um, so when it came to actually outlining this drawing, I actually used, um, two different pens, which is Unipin Fine Liners and Faber-Castle pens. Faber-Castle is the one brand that I'm more than familiar with. It's the first manga pen I've ever really used when I started getting into manga art. And Unipins was something I found later on, and I think it's slowly replacing my stuff. It's especially good with, like, z the 0 0.8 Unipin fineliner is amazing. Like, it's a godsend. Love that outliner two bits. But one outliner that I want to use way more, especially when it comes to art styles like this, is Micron pens. Um, because for some reason, according to a lot of beginner artists, Microns are the one pen that is like a really good starter, and it's apparently they're really, really good fine liners. I just never touch them. They just never really cross my radar at all. And now that I have like a set of them, and I'm gonna be getting another set soon, I really wanna use these more. Like Micron pens are actually really good. Like if you wanna get into manga art, get some Microns. Like they're amazing. I mean, they, they may be a little more expensive in terms of like um, cost value, but the, but, like, if you pay the extra money, definitely get Microns. Because if, you, if you're willing to spend that extra bit of money, then by all means do. 
But if you're if you're looking for something that's more cheap, I guess you could go with Unipin fine liners, because despite their cheap cost, they're still really really effective. Like I can't recommend Unipin fine liners enough. Um, when it comes to uh, Faber Castle pens, I do feel like they have um, a lot of really good factors to them. I feel like they're just the perfect center if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, but not too much. But yeah, if you're willing to go cheap, get uni pens, expensive microns. That's pretty much all I'm really trying to say. Um, when it came to outlining this piece, like I know I said that before, but trust me, I'm going to say something different. But when it came to outlining this piece, I just found it to be super relaxing but also very challenging in the same way because what was really good about this piece was that I had references constantly. I was constantly looking up at the screen. I was constantly like going to the laptop and finding um, different images to use for the piece. And that extra bit of reference really helped me in nailing the art style. I, I still, I don't feel like I got it all the way. I do feel like if I added like um, a bit of gray to the drawing, it might've turned out better. But I was just so happy with the line art, I just didn't want to ruin it. I just really didn't. Because I feel like this is probably so, like an example of some of my best line work, in my like personal opinion. And yeah, I have to say, this drawing was just really fun. This drawing, I expected this drawing to be hell. And it was for like the first minute or so, but once I got into the flow of... Um, of just using the fine liners and like not thinking too much about you know mistakes and stuff like that and just going with what feels natural and looking constantly up at references to find oh this is how uh, a shirt is shaded this is how wood is shaded in Junji's art style this is how his mouth this is how the mouths and the teeth would be like it was very relaxing it was really fun and I feel like that's something I need to do more often especially in artworks like these I am terrible when it comes to not using references. Like, I am really, really bad. Because I, I, I always grew up thinking that, like, oh, if I use references, I'm not that good of an artist. I, I, I feel like I'm failing if I always have to, like, stoop back to reference. Don't ever think that. I feel like, as a beginner artist, don't ever be ashamed with, you, with using references. And if someone tries to shame you for referencing, fuck them. <laughs> just, 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 their opinion don't matter. Opinion don't matter. It's just, I feel like once you start getting more into the swing of things, um, in terms of, in terms of artwork, you'll find out that using references is, is completely okay, and it's perfectly natural to use references. And now, and like, now that I said that, I feel like I'm going to use references way more in future pieces. And honestly, I think this entire series like this little idea that i have of like oh let's just take a disney character that everyone loves and turn him into i don't know maybe a monster in like junji's art style or like just taking disney characters and putting them in a different manga style is probably the best thing that i've ever come up with i feel like this is really going to help me out with being more experimental in my artwork and i feel like it's going to create some amazing results and i already have some thoughts on how i'm actually going to make future videos i feel like it would be really cool if I just like take a week to make these videos, five days is dedicated to research and just anything like just concept sketches, blah, 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 just all that kind of stuff, which I could share throughout the week, like on my Twitter. It just feels like this would be a perfect opportunity to just help me grow as an artist. And yeah, all in all, I have to say this art piece is really awakening, um, really awakening um, some definite potential. And I'm really looking forward to that. And I hope you guys are going to like it too. So if you liked this piece, then by all means, you can like the video, share it. It really helps me if you share it. And you can subscribe for more content in the future. And if you liked this sort of rambly off the cuff thing, then by all means, tell me in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Honestly, this was quite fun. It was it was weird to get into it first, but now I'm kind of in the gist of it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do this. I mean, not really, but yeah, I'm getting there. I promise I'm getting there. It's, Experimental boys, experimental. But um, yeah, all in all, my name is Manga Artist. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.